Days of Future Past was one of my favorite runs. That and Dark Phoenix were my two favorites growing up, being a huge X-Men fan. So the pressure I felt more than the movie franchise or the movie stars or any of that was to me and to the fans of the book to be as true as possible to the essence of the original stories because I love the comic Days of Future Past. Like Chris Claremont was involved in our process. Chris is actually in the movie. Um, so I wanted to honor uh, the comic. Uh, the, the, the story of the movie is we start in a sort of apocalyptic future where mutants are being hunted down and essentially exterminated. And as a last ditch effort, they send someone back in time to warn their younger selves of this impending doom to try to stop it before it's too late. Of course, I mean, the film fuses the cast of First Class with the original trilogy cast. How excited were you to see all of those wonderful people on screen at the same time in the same film? Well, I mean, it, it, the most insane thing I've ever experienced professionally and, and or as a fan is seeing all of these actors in the same film, many of them occupying the same scenes. Uh, I worked with the original cast in X3, I worked with the young cast on First Class. I never in my wildest dreams thought that I'd see them in the same movie or that we'd actually be able to bring Days of Future Past to life. So it was a real thrill. Of course, we know we're getting Apocalypse after this. Um, I'm curious how this film sets that up and is that going to be a storyline focused on the first class cast or the older generation? Uh, well, at the end of this movie, um, if you stick around for the tag, there's uh, a little bit of a hint of what is to come in future X-Men movies. Um, it'll primarily be focused on the X-Men first class cast in the next chapter in, in their lives. We left uh, Raven, uh, Charles and uh, Eric at a very interesting crossroads. Um, where do we pick up with them in this and, and kind of what journey do they go on this time? Well, this movie takes place in the past part of the film, 10 years after the end of uh, X-Men First Class. So you're seeing young Charles, young Eric, Raven and Hank, 10 years after the end of First Class where they sort of all split apart. Uh, Charles lost the, the power to control his legs. Um, uh, Raven went off with, um, with uh, Eric. Uh, so you see the sort of effects of those choices they made uh, 10 years later. And some of them are stronger for it and some of them are weaker for it. And this is really the story more than anything of young Charles Xavier taking a step toward uh, being the Professor Xavier we know of Patrick Stewart. Of course, at the end of First Class, Jennifer really had moved towards embracing her inner mystique. Um, did she enjoy the experience this time? I mean, a lot more blue makeup, I'd imagine. Well, uh, actually, one of the things I think Jen enjoyed so much about the process of making uh, Days of Future Past is that we got the makeup down to about half the length it took on uh, First Class. So she, I think in First Class, sometimes would be in the makeup trailer for seven, eight hours getting that blue body paint on. And this, we, uh, we trimmed it way down. I know you've just done your first week on Fantastic Four. There's so much fan excitement about that reboot. Can you talk us through, I guess, first of all, the cast? Because it's a wonderful new generation you've got there. I'm so excited about Fantastic Four. I mean, that movie has really been crafted, created by Josh Trank, the director. I mean, he has such a clear vision for what he wants to do with the film tonally. And it's more grounded and real, emotional, character-driven, more along the lines of the X-Men franchise or, you know, all the modern superhero movies. Um, and accordingly, he cast an amazing cast, you know, cast of dramatic actors, actors who are the next generation, like some of these guys, of you know the actors who will be up in the, for Oscars and and Golden Globes to come. I mean, Michael B. Jordan for me should have been nominated for an Oscar last year for Fruitvale. Miles Teller's movie won Sundance this year. Jamie Bell's been one of the leading you know actors of his generation for what 10, 15 years now. Uh, Kate Mara is so fantastic on House of Cards. It's really like. We tried to get a, a group of top-notch actors who could play characters, not a genre movie so much as a drama. And what do you want to do with this version of Fantastic Four? Because I think obviously the last two films in the series, um, they had a lot of humor, but I think fans maybe thought, particularly the last one, maybe a little bit too much humor. It kind of... Yeah, you know, well, I, I got approached about working on this Fantastic Four movie, and the studio said, talk to Josh Trank on the phone. And I talked to Josh, and he was so clear about what he wanted to do in redefining the tone of the franchise to make it not goofy. You know, where there's humor, it comes from character and real emotion and situation, not from, you know, having to create a joke. And the movie overall is just a more emotional, more dramatic, um, where the science fiction uh, sort of could go toward fiction, Josh reels it back toward science. It's a different kind of Fantastic Four. Casting the villains is as important as casting the heroes in these movies. And um, the best villains in any film always have like real humanity and pathos 
to them. They have to play as like you know human beings, not as uh, you know cartoon characters. And Toby has the kind of gravity that we were all looking for 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 Victor. Of course, I mean with X Men, um, we know we're getting Apocalypse, and that's a first class film. I think the question fans have is this the last time we're going to see people like Ian and Patrick in an X Men film in an X Men project? You know, I have no idea. If you would ask me that at the premiere of X Men: uh, The Last Stand, I would have said, "Yeah, this is the last time we're going to see Ian and Patrick." Uh, given the fact that we're here 10 years later, and the way the comic book movies happen these days, where they're constantly innovating and surprising people, I would say nothing is impossible. Talking about, I guess, Apocalypse. Obviously, there's an expectation that's the kind of climactic uh, element of a trilogy. Do you think there could be films beyond that with the first class cast? Because they've just really redefined the roles, and I think people would love to see more films with Jennifer and Michael and. and, and I'm so focused right now. I mean, I've been focused up to the last few weeks on getting Days of Future Past done, and now I'm so focused on getting Apocalypse started. I'm a huge fan of these actors and the way that they've inhabited these characters. So I certainly would love to see more movies with them. Who's your favorite X-Men and why? I think it tells a lot about me. Um, well, I don't know if this will tell you about me, but Air Magneto. Magneto was always my favorite character. He's my favorite villain, including even Darth Vader in any story, because he's so human and so um, motivated and justified uh, and, and uh, has a complex philosophy. I always loved him as a character in the books, and I love what Ian and Michael have done with him.